Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. Today is going to be a really fun day to share with you a project that I finally finished. A new project, which is made out of our jersey net. We're going to talk about a pajama pattern that's going to be a shirt. We're going to talk about a canvas jacket and a canvas bag, another bag. It's called Sidekick. And also, we're going to give you an update on our inventory and our shipment that is about to arrive. So let's start with that. Next week, we're really excited. Bruce and I are excited to receive our shipment of 115 inch wide batik cotton. We have a lot of pre-orders that have to get cut and shipped. So I think we're going to be very busy probably Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week to get all of that in-house, in inventory, cut and shipped. We're also getting restocking of our nuance gradation fabrics as well. So um, lots happening next week in the midst of all of this sewing and all this fun stuff. Um, but the first thing I wanted to share with you today is the top that I'm wearing underneath this kimono jacket. And I'm going to stand up and share with you. I'm going to move this aside for here for just a moment. And I'm going to share this with you before the holiday. I really wanted to make a coordinating outfit with two of our most recent batik rayon fabrics. And the goal was to make something really simple, yet really, I don't know, just really bright and fun. And these were the fabrics that I selected. The kimono is the easy rolled edge kimono pattern and you can make this up in a half an hour. So definitely find that video below if you haven't made one of these before, but it's really a simple way to make a really fun kimono jacket. And so I made this out of our Valhalla motif in the colorway of Sangria. And then underneath, I really wanted a long sleeve, simple, top again made out of our rayon and this is the hand dyed bright violet shade but i'm using the montrose top pattern by cashmerat and this doesn't have a long sleeve to it and so what i wanted to do was see if i could just simply extend that sleeve to give me a long sleeve and it worked very easily i'm going to take off this kimono so that you can see the top um, I really just love the style of it, and I can't say that enough because it's just simple, basic, it's like a go-to pattern. And it's probably going to be very hard for you to see this because the color is so deep. But it is a simple round neck. I made, let me jump back here for just a second, there's more than one view on this pattern. There's a view with a round, a lower round neck and a shorter sleeve. And then there's a higher round neck with an elbow length. It's kind of a, it almost feels like a fitted, more fitted sleeve. And I've made this version out of both our linen and our rayon. And I did a little tutorial on this Montrose top on how I adjusted the back neck opening. And if I can, I'll turn around here, but basically this slit. And so it's just a simple back. Back is on the fold, front is on the fold. And all I did truly, and I'm sure all of you have done this before, it is nothing new, but all I did was simply take the sleeve pattern piece, and I know this is a little bit wrinkled, but just this short, this is the elbow length sleeve. The short sleeve actually would uh, stops right where that crease is right there. What I did is I simply took this pattern piece and over here, right on this side, I kind of gradually, I just increased the sleeve width just slightly and then took it all the way down to a 19 inch sleeve. Basically, I used as much fabric as I had to work with out of two and a half yards of fabric, which is what this elbow length 
shirt requires. So I didn't use any more fabric, but it was a little tricky trying to get everything in place and also get the bias neck facing out of it. So I did have to piece this facing because I didn't have enough left over for that bias. I used it all for my sleeve. But I just want you to know that if you want to use the same pattern that you have that doesn't have a long sleeve um, pattern layout for it, it's so simple. Just simply, and especially on this Montrose top pattern, just simply extend that sleeve to as long as you want it. And I'm just gonna tell you, I got lucky <laughs> that it actually there was no, no precise measurements. I just truly took that, angled it down, and it made a very nice opening. And I just love it because it's a long sleeve. And this uh, chilly weather that we're having right now, I think across the nation is, um, requiring a long sleeve and the shorter sleeve of this kimono I think really looks great because you can see the hand dyed bright violet underneath it and it I really love how this turned out so more kimonos and more Montrose tops are in my future <laughs> <laughs> because it covers up so nicely. Anyway, so I just wanted to share with you how this turned out. And um, it's just, it's so easy. So hopefully you will go and find these patterns and uh, whip this up as well. So, and again, the Montrose pattern comes, oops, comes in two different size ranges. One is zero to 16 and the other is 12 to 32. So you should have these in your, in your pattern arsenal. Okay. The next and new project that I want to share with you today is out of our Jersey knit. And I selected the Violetta motif in the shade of Sage. I've never made anything with a light green for myself. And so this is, this is a new one for me. And I am, I have to tell you, I'm not wearing it today because it doesn't look so great with this purple top. Um, I'm a little picky. And so what I'm going to do is tomorrow, I'm going to put on a, a cream colored turtleneck and take some new pictures of it. So you'll see some really, really fun pictures of this uh, sweater. But I really love the sweater. It is exactly what I was looking for. This is the Marlowe sweater. And now we've got two patterns again with different size ranges and different lengths. The Marlowe sweater pattern is by True Bias. And I'm just going to show this cover because that was my intention was to make a sweater that has room in the sleeve and arm area. And that just fits nicely and very comfy um, and something that you can wear over either a turtleneck or a long sleeve top like I'm wearing um, and just feel comfortable. And it really did exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's talk a little bit about the Marlowe sweater pattern. There are two versions of this. One is size zero to 18 and the other is size 14 to 30. And each of them has the shorter version and the longer version of this sweater. The shorter sweater, let me grab my notes here. The shorter sweater measures 20 and a half inches. This is 28 and a half inches. So when I have this on, it is below, it is actually, it's quite long. It's not as long as this um, kimono, but it is quite long on me and it's the perfect length. However, measure, make sure that you're measuring from the back neck. I have to tell you, I had, I always compare the measurements after I'm finished making something and I'm going to pull that back just a little bit here, but from the base of the neck, which is typically where I measure everything from there, to the hem is actually 26 and a half. And the, if you're measuring it from the top of the facing 
to the bottom of the hem, it is 28 and a half. So that's the difference that I found with measuring. And um, uh, so take that into consideration depending on your height. And this pattern was written for somebody that is five foot five with a C cup. So that's the base of this pattern. And I'm 5'7", and I felt like the 28 and a half inches that they described on the pattern for the length is perfect. I made a size 12, and the one thing with the finishing measurements on this particular pattern is that for a size 12, the finished measurements are 47 for the bust, 47 for the waist, and 47 for the hip. So we have a very, very straight pattern. And let me show you the pattern pieces of just the main pattern so that you can kind of get a feel for how straight this is. This pattern piece is the front and here is your arm opening and the side seam. Here is the V to the front of the sweater and going straight down, okay? So it, it has a very long opening for your sleeve and that's what gives it that really great fullness. So if you're wearing a heavy sweater or something underneath this sweater, it doesn't feel it. It just adds a little bit of a layer of comfort. This is the back pattern piece. So we've got our neckline. This is on the fold. So that's our center back. Here is the arm opening goes all the way down to here and then it's perfectly straight. Well, almost perfectly straight. <laughs> and there's our shoulder. So it's very boxy. Um, and I think that's of course, part of the design of this sweater. Now here's the fun part. This is the sleeve pattern. Look at how fun the sleeve is. And again, gives it that fullness. So we've got a very large opening for our sleeve and very full tapering here at a curve down to the wrist. And then we've got our wristband that goes on the bottom of this to finish off our sleeve opening. So if I were to hold this out, you'll see what the sleeve starts right here, okay? And so it gives a really, really nice fullness and nice shape to that sleeve and a very loose straight fit to the side of the sweater. And there's two front pockets, which is fun. And the neckband, there's a seam in the back and two very long neckbands from the center back down to the hem. And actually I should move this back a little bit further. There you go, um, down to the hem there, okay? The shorter version of this will stop a little bit higher, eight inches higher or so, and only requires three buttons. So the button size on this sweater is an inch and an eighth. And so what I did is I didn't have an inch and an eighth buttons, four of them, just hanging around here for this. And I just wanted to complete this sweater. So what I did is I used the make your own button <laughs> craft cover button kit for an inch and an eighth buttons and used our jersey knit a little bit of a circle i love these kits because you can make something up really fast and finish a project um, you can always replace buttons if you decide that you find a button that really works with this or something that can add a little bit more style to your sweater or jacket or shirt whatever garment you're, that you're making but for this i just decided that the you know, fabric covered buttons were just perfect. And so the kits come with this little plastic template. I don't think you can really see that, but it's a little template. You draw a circle around the outside of that. So simple. You put that in your press, center it in the press, and you just press down on your button. It's just a silver rounded cover button and see how it sits in there? Push each one of these edges inside. You're just folding it in. And if any of you have ever made those yo-yos and, 
and stitched the, or uh, taking your thread and stitched all the way around it and then pulled the thread together. That's exactly what it looks like when you've pressed each one of those edges inside this little tool. You put the shank on the top of that and use this little pressing tool to snap it into place. And you'll feel it and you'll hear it snap right into place. And that's all it takes to make a simple fabric cover button. Um, and I have so many of these different sizes at home and here, just in case I need to make a button. Um, so I am gonna still look for some really fun buttons for, for this particular sweater, uh, but I just think that it is so easy. And you pop this out the bottom and you have your completed button. Everything is flush to it. And then you just hand stitch on um, through the shank there when you're at that step in making your sweater. It's just an easy way to make a button. So I always have these on hand and it's great because there's 10 in a pack. So depending on how many you need, you use them for one, two or three different projects. So very, very simple. Okay, now back to the sweater, <laughs> my little tutorial there. This sweater, one of the things that um, I found to be kind of interesting with this sweater is, and I wondered at first why, the neck band, I understand why the, the um, uh, hemp binding and the wrist binding are all placed so that the stretch goes around you, okay? So you're cutting it out cross grain. I was trying to figure out why we would lay out the neck band that same way. So the stretch goes across this. I was always wondering why it wasn't going to be this way. Well, we need to have stretch on this neck band in order to stretch it nice and comfortably around the back of the neck here. And so without that stretch, it would not fit properly. And so there is a little bit of stretching that needs to take place around the back neck. And there are um, notches where you stop stretching so that you don't have to stretch any way down, any further down the front of the sweater. So we do need a little bit of stretch. Now, I'm gonna step back one more time. Our fabric has approximately 20% stretch. And I never think about our fabric's stretch when I'm picking out a pattern. Ex I will say one exception, I will take that back. If a pattern calls for, or fabric requirements are for, and the design is for a knit that has 50% stretch or four-way stretch, I won't even consider it. Just because the design is, is made in such a way that it really requires that amount of stretch. But when it's something like a sweater um, or a dress that is a knit dress that doesn't require the 50% stretch, um, I'm up for a great challenge. And this is one of those patterns that I was really thrilled to see inside the front uh, booklet, instruction booklet, is an indicator that you sometimes see on these McCall's and Simplicity patterns that are knit, where you can test the stretch of your fabric. So you know how much stretch you truly have. And in here, which pattern piece to cut depending on the stretch you have in your fabric. So for example, this neck band here, there's two pattern pieces in this pattern. One is for fabric that has 40% stretch, one that is 20% to 40% stretch. The 40% stretch pattern piece is shorter than the 20 to 40% stretch. Does that make sense? So this one is a little bit longer and that's what we used on this sweater with our fabric because it has less stretch. The 40% stretch pattern piece would have been too short and would have required way too much stretching and would have never worked with our fabric. And so it's really great. I really love this true bias pattern that, that had 
the differences between them and really accounts for the amount of stretch um, in the design of their sweater. So I do appreciate that very, very much. The only other thing that I think that is, you know, I'm not really doing a tutorial of how, a step-by-step -step of how to make the sweater. I think that it, it, it doesn't really warrant that because it's a simple two front pattern pieces that are joined to the back at the shoulder. And then you add your sleeves. And then we add our um, wrist bindings, the hem binding, the last thing to be added to this garment is the front um, facing from the top back all the way to the hem. And the other thing that I wanted to note in this particular pattern is that it does come with two different options for how to attach the neckband. One is considered a beginner uh, method and one is a more intermediate method. And I've never seen that in a pattern before, and I think it's really great that it allows you to use your own skills to challenge yourself as to whether or not you want kind of an easier solution to adding a neck facing to something that is just a little slightly more difficult, but actually gives kind of a nice hidden finish to the inside of the neckband. And I don't know if I can show this or not, but the differences, without giving you a tutorial, but the differences are um, actually just really, really subtle. I'm gonna unbutton this so that you can, hopefully I can describe this properly. But the beginner method is to take, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna use the pattern piece here, is to take your pattern piece, fold it in half with your wrong sides facing each other, so your wrong sides are touching, okay? This isn't really working for me standing up here, but if you fold that in half and consider that now your neckband and press that in place. This then is attached to the front and back after you've sewn it together, but um, attached to the front and the back of your sweater all the way around, either with a stretch stitch or with a surged edge so that you have a really nice finished edge. It's then turned and then you top press that seam towards your sweater away from the facing and then you're going to top stitch all the way around the outside to finish that off and to keep that seam facing your sweater and keep everything flat and in place. So on the inside, you're going to see your seam. Okay, so that's the beginner method. It's very basic, very simple to do, and gives you a, if you've used an overlock stitch or a serger, a very nice finish to this knit top or knit sweater. The more intermediate version of this is to leave this open. So we're leaving our facing open we're just gonna finish one edge of it by pressing it up your seam allowance. But we're going to stitch, while this is open, stitch, attach that to the back and front facings of our sweater. And then this comes all the way around. And remember, this has been folded under, so we have a nice folded edge comes all the way around, and then you're going to make sure that that folded edge is nicely folded, and then top stitch again all the way around the edge to give it a really nice finished look. There is slight, there's a difference in how the bottom of the hem finishes as well, just really slightly, um, but it gives it this really nice finish on the inside where you don't see the seam at all. So if you're, if you don't consider yourself an, I don't know, like an intermediate or an advanced sewer, challenge yourself and do that intermediate step instead of the, the beginning step or beginner step, um, because I really think it, you'll be much happier with the simple finish and the simple line of that facing by using that intermediate step, okay? But otherwise, 
it's just a really, really super great sweater. And tomorrow I'm going to wear this sweater with my turtleneck and look a little more kind of color coordinated. <laughs> Okay, um, but you'll also see the image on our fabric kits that will be on our website and um, you'll see the, the really nice look of that as well. So I am really excited to make this sweater um, in another fabric and I'm going to make one change to it though. And this is just my personal preference, um, but the back of the sweater with this ribbing, now of course the ribbing or the binding that the um, hem that I do have on here is out of the same fabric. So I didn't use a second ribbing fabric or anything like that. So it does have a slight, and I don't know if you can see this on camera at all, but it, it's stretched slightly to fit the hem of the garment. And so when I wear it, I feel like it's coming a little bit in right on around my hip area and I don't really like that so much. I could make it longer or I could make it shorter and I think it would get rid of that kind of look and you'll know what I mean when I put it on. But I think I'm going to lengthen the jacket and not use the ribbing on the bottom. Just simply finish it as a 28 and a half inch sweater without this ribbing. and. I think it'll look the same on the front and everything will be shaped nicely and it, it will just finish. So for me, that's what I really wanted in the sweater. And so the rest of it is perfect. The pockets are great. Everything is wonderful. The buttons and where it fits, I just love it. So, and I know you will too. Um, and I think the short version of it, if you take a look at this, uh, pattern jacket, which has the shorter version on it. It is um, eight inches shorter, and I think it's more on your upper hip where the sweater lands. Okay, and this version only requires three buttons. So I'm really glad I got this pattern and we've added it to our collection. And I think it's just going to be a great pattern for you in our jersey knit. So take a look for those kits on our website. And of with all of our garment kits now, we're still kind of retrofitting some of the older ones that we have on our website, but you always have the option of purchasing the fabric and any notions that come with it, like interfacing. And this does have an optional uh, clear elastic for um, the shoulder area. That all comes with the kit. And then you have the option of adding on the pattern if you already have the pattern. You don't have to pay for it twice. We just always are going to have an optional pattern for you. Okay. So definitely try this one out. I think you're going to love, 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 love this sweater. We are going to talk about a couple of upcoming really, really, really fun projects. And one of them has already started, so I can't even show you all of the pattern pieces. Kathy is sewing um, a new garment for us. And <laughs> I just posted this on social media today. And I'm sure people are going to think I'm crazy, but I don't think I am. So this Fran um, pajama pattern, I love this pattern. I just, when I saw the ads for this and I saw it on Instagram and on Facebook. I really liked what people were doing with these pajamas and I just think they're really cool. It just adds a little bit of style to your pajamas. It has an optional front pocket on both the uh, pant and the top. The back of it is really neat and it has this tuck in the center. I think it's really fun. It's got a yoke, long sleeves, just just doesn't that look like the most comfortable pajama you'd ever wear? But then I said to myself, wouldn't that also be a great shirt? So I'm not making pajamas. I will eventually make pajamas, but out of our cotton, um, I think what I need to do is figure out which one of our 115 inch wide fabrics I wanna use. And I think it's gonna be great to use the wider cotton simply because one 45 inch wide cut across the 115 inch wide fabric is gonna give me a sh shirt. And I think 
a pant. So I'm going to test that out and see where we go with our wide cotton for the pajama. But until then, Kathy is going to be sewing a shirt out of our batik linen. And isn't that going to be fun out of our batik linen? And I have a few scraps here. I took this home, I surged up the cut edge and washed it. But this is the fabric we're going to use for this top. And this is the Medora Flora motif in the shade of Pinot Noir. I'm getting into really, really rich colors these days. But this is the washed version of it. And I just, I don't know, I think this shirt is going to hang really nice. Um, and wearing it with jeans or nice slacks or whatever it happens to be, I think it'll be great. So to me, this pattern, it just reads comfy shirt and pajamas. <laughs> so I kind of turned it around a little bit. So this is going to be kind of fun. The pattern itself, for those of you who aren't familiar with this particular pattern, it is kind of, she puts on here a difficulty of three out of five. So we'll see. I don't, I don't know. It's got buttons. It has a waistband on the pants with elastic and drawstring. Um, but other than that, it's really a simple collar and a hem and front and back of a shirt. So it's probably the pants, maybe just because it's a pant. But it does take a little bit of fusible, fusible interfacing for the top. It takes buttons. So we've got some three eighths to a half inch wide buttons. And then for the pant, there's elastic, drawstring, and of course your matching thread. The pattern is sizes XXS, so extra small, to a 4X. So it's really got an amazing range of sizes in this pattern. And we decided to make a straight medium because of the fullness of the waistband and the upper portion of the top. I just stuck with a medium. So we're gonna see how that works and how it turns out and whether or not it is too big or too small. So stay tuned for that. Now, the one thing that I found to be kind of interesting with this top is the fabric requirements. It's a different layout for me. Here is why I'm questioning some of this. And it's just, it's just for me, I got a little bit confused. The XX small, extra small, and small for just the top of 58 inch wide fabric takes two and three fourths yards, okay? The medium and large, the requirement is three yards. The extra large and one X is two and a half yards. So we go down in yardage. And then the two X to four X is two and three fourths yards, which is the same yardage that you would use if you were an extra, extra small. So at first I read this and I thought, oh, this must be a misprint. There's something wrong with this. But then when I looked at their recommended layout of all the pattern pieces, I kind of understand why the yardage is the way it is. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about that here. We're going to do that, I think, when I can take you over to an overhead shot and lay out all the pattern pieces so you see what I'm talking about. But it's basically the difference between using the fabric that's on the fold, always on the fold, and actually folding your fabric to cut out your pattern pieces versus opening up your fabric completely wide, flat, one single layer, and positioning your pattern pieces completely open and cutting them out one at a time. It just depends on the level of work you want to put into cutting out your fabric for the pattern itself. And so it was a little bit different for me. I've never seen the yardage and the fabric layouts so different. And so, uh, I don't know, I just have always assumed that if it's on the fold, it's on the fold. So that's just me and my, my background, I guess. And so we're gonna talk about that a little bit. But what I did is we our linen is 54 inches wide. And so it's a little narrower than the 58 inch wide fabric requirement. I cut three yards of our batik linen, and after pre-washing it, I lost two inches on shrinkage, which is not too bad. And so then I laid out the pattern pieces for a medium, 
and I used only two and two, two and a quarter yards of the fabric and ours is 54 inches wide. So it was a significant savings and I didn't really do anything out of the ordinary. I'll make sure that I include my pattern layout that I used for our linen in each one of the kits so that you can kind of see how I laid out the pattern pieces. The other thing is that I positioned the pattern pieces as if I were going to be cutting out a 4X. I just always need to make sure that we have enough fabric in our kits, regardless of size that you might be making. And then I do, I make sure that I have a size range in there. So, and I don't remember exactly, I'm not gonna quote myself here on exactly how many yards, but I will also include the pattern layout, fabric layout, for the yardage that we include in the kit, just so that you have more than one option for laying out your pattern pieces. And you can choose which one is best for, for you, okay? But we're really excited about sewing this one up. I think it's gonna be fun. And I can't promise that it's going to be next week, but we'll see, I, I'm just really excited about it. The next two projects we're going to talk about are with our Batik canvas. And the first one I want to share with you is a garment. And I'm really excited to be sewing the canvas as a garment. And this one's going to be a jacket. This pattern really caught my eye. Look at that. It is just a simple style. This is a shorter version. There are There is also a longer version um, as well. But I'm going to do this exact jacket. It has a simple collar. The back does have, much like the Fran pajama, it has a center tuck, and then we'll have a really nice finish on our sleeve hem as well. But I couldn't decide which canvas I wanted to use, whether or not it would be the 5.0 ounce or our 8.6. So I did decide on the 8.6 ounce. I'm going to work with the heavier weight canvas and see how this turns out with this jacket. And I cut and washed up the Valhalla motif, and this is in the colorway of Lavender Lantern. Look at that, isn't that pretty? I just think this is gonna make a beautiful jacket. So I'm gonna test my machine, I'm gonna test my abilities here to make a collar and buttons, buttonholes, pockets and everything with this canvas. And um, I'm excited to take you along on this little journey. <laughs> so this one, I might actually do more of a tutorial on it just because it's a different fabric. It's the first time we'll be sharing with you this fabric in a garment. And so I'm, I'm thoroughly excited. So if you're interested in this pattern, we do have this on our website and it's the Simplicity 9239 and all of our simplicity patterns on our website are eight dollars so grab that one even if you want to make it out of cotton i also see this as a linen it looks very very comfortable as a linen um, jacket as well but for me we're working on canvas and then the last project i want to share with you today is another canvas project and it's it's a actually a project that is a biani pattern and it's one that I have actually wanted to make for a long time. It is the Sidekick pattern. And again, by Annie. We have a sample still in our store here. And I have to send this back to Annie. We sent Annie some fabric to play with. And this is our five ounce canvas. And this is the Gardenese Divine in the shade of Lilac. We coordinated that with the Violetta cotton now. We have two cotton cord. One is the cotton coordinate and one is the cotton lining. We didn't put canvas in the lining at all. Um, but the Violetta Purple Passion is the coordinate that is used as the binding and the handle. And then inside, actually I'm just going to show you this on the, on the reverse side of this. We have the Violetta in sachet pink. So that's the third fabric. But this is the neatest holder. I just love, it's called a saddlebag organizer. And my mom has a walker that she uses. And I just think that this would be the perfect little handy dandy organizer. 
<laughs> to have on her walker and or you know you can have it on anything that has some form of a handle that you can drape this over sorry for the velcro there but this just simply goes over the bar it either has velcro here it also has a strap i haven't shown you the strap here that can add stability to the bottom of the bag if it's attached to your walker it has uh, mesh here for papers, water bottle, whatever that might be. Has a zipper opening, goes all the way to the bottom. And then on the front portion is more of a, I suppose that's about, I don't know, two and a half to three inches of depth here with a zipper closing where you can hold anything in here that you would like to a notebook could be a could be a little tablet could be anything that you need to always have with you your phone um, on your walker and so we have um, mesh compartment you can put a water bottle in here mesh all the way around this and then just a really nice stable bottom to it and so i think this is going to be kind of fun I don't think it's too difficult. I think the only area that might be a little tricky is attaching this front piece to the back base of the pattern. But we're gonna take this one on step-by-step step, and you'll have a tutorial with this one as well. I'm, this is gonna be kind of fun because I think there's so many uses for it. Okay, we're gonna close that, but let me share with you the fabric we selected for our project that we're gonna make here. This is our canvas, and this is the um, five ounce canvas, and it is the Gardenese Divine in the shade of Dazzle. The lining I'm gonna put with it is our cotton. So this is the Valhalla motif in the shade of Lamb Chop. Doesn't that work beautifully? It adds just a spice of of life to that, the purple. And then our coordinate is gonna be a darker color. And the coordinate will be our sacred branch is the motif in the color of eggplant. So look at those three together. I think that's gonna be so much fun. These are going on the long arm and I'm just, it doesn't take a lot of fabric. It's like a half a yard of the canvas, a half a yard of your lining and then I think I can get away with five eighths of a yard at 45 inches wide for the coordinate. So it's not a big project. It has a lot of mesh, a lot of fold over elastic, um, and then a zippers, just a small portion of zippers in two different places. So you'll be working with each one of those different components as well as a strap. Um, there is a strap that has not hardware as much as it is a strap, what do you call it, a clamp? Where you can put the strap through here to tie it and secure it around the bottom of a walker, okay? That's it. So this is gonna be kind of fun and I'm excited about this project. Okay. I think I've shared enough. <laughs> so we have a lot going on ahead of us here. I'm gonna add a couple more images of these projects to our website. We'll have all of this on our website for you to enjoy as well. And if you have any questions or need any help with coordinating any fabrics, whether it be canvas with cotton or cotton with cotton, um, let me know. I've been helping all week long putting together different fabric combinations for people. Um, we do start every kit with five or six different color combinations, but there are an unending amount. And so if you've got a favorite colorway that you would love us to help you with, um, we will do that, okay? So just either get on the chat of our website, send me an email at services, that's plural, services at sobatique.com, or give us a phone call. Um, we're more than happy to help you at any time, okay? Sending pictures back and forth. And, and those selections may end up being an option that's permanently on our website, you never know. So um, let us know. 
So thank you for following along today on this Fabric Friday. Hopefully everybody stays warm over the weekend. There's this storm going across the country and we just want you to stay toasty and enjoy your weekend and keep sewing. <laughs> so on that note, keep sewing, smiling and sharing.